What up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Late Night Live number 20. 20. I cannot believe we've been doing this 20 weeks already. That's bananas crazy. That's a long time. Like, that's a lot. Money. That's a month and a week. <laughs> What up, Pody? What up, Mamed? Happy pre-birthday, Marilyn. Or happy birthday in three hours. And what up, So today is Late Night Live Foil Edition. We are foiling today. Um, have I done foiling live? Yes, I foiled a bird live. But that was on Instagram. I don't think I've done that on YouTube yet. I don't believe. That's what we're doing today. We're going to be foiling. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them at any time. Um, I'm just going to try to foil a piece. Um, yeah, and answer questions. I don't know. I wasn't, I'm not sure if people will come in and ask questions about foiling uh, or not. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, this is my foiling tool for anybody who's never seen one. Uh, it is made by Razor Tip. Talk about the equipment. Yes, of course. So this is the uh, this is my foiling machine. This is not the first foiling tool that I used. First foiling tool. Pause. I'm unorganized. I should have had this prepared. But stay right there. I'm right back. Take, we'll take a little trip down foiling memory lane here. Um, the very first tool that I ever foiled with, I have two of them here, was this. This is the Walnut Hollow Versa tool. It's a not expensive wood burning tool that you can get at Michael's or pretty much any craft shop or even hardware stores and whatnot. Um, that is the tool that I used basically when I, I don't want to say created uh, the foiling on leather techniques and whatnot, but that is, this is the tool that I used and I used it for years. I traveled the world using this tool, foiling in Germany and all over the place. Um, so it's a great tool. Uh, there are limitations to it. Uh, it takes a long time to heat up. And on the dial, it's not always, I guess it's dependent on what plug-in you're plugged into, and it's not super exact in its temperature. So every time is sort of a little bit of a guessing game until you get the right temperature. Um, and where the slow heating up becomes a factor is you can't just set it, then you have to wait a while to test it, and then if it's not right, you have to change it and then wait a while sort of the temperature to equalize to what you set it at. Um, but it's a great tool for starting out. Um, in my opinion, one of the most important parts of foiling, uh, of, of a foiling machine. And I know some of them have it, some of them don't. But for me, temperature control is super, super essential. Unless you have a tool that uh, doesn't change tips, or if you're only using it for one specific sort of uh, material, like if you're using a specific cardstock or if you have it set for a, if, if it works on a specific leather or something like that, um, different materials require different temperature. So the temperature control was really important. Also, as you guys know, I do stuff that's not always with foil. I do blind embossing as well, which requires more heat. So having a tool that can do all of that is super important. Now, I wanted something that was, that would heat up a little bit quicker and had a little more fine tuning in the temperature control range. And that's when I reached out to Razor Tip, which is one of the industry leading uh, pyrography or wood burning tool makers out there in general. Uh, I feel like the best of the best wood burners, I feel like use Razor Tip tools because they're dope. Uh, so I acquired one of their tools, but found that they run um, factory slightly too hot for foil. Uh, they can work. What up, James? Uh, they run factory slightly too hot for foil, unfortunately. 
Um, there's a lot of people, I have a lot of people who saw my tool and they went out and purchased a razor tip tool from a shop or online somewhere. And I get a lot of messages from people asking, hey, I have the razor tip tool. How do I get it to work with foil? And unfortunately, the off the shelf or factory tools from razor tip don't work with foil because they burn too hot. So what I did is I contacted them and asked if we could modify one to work specifically for foil. And that's what this is. That's why it has custom branding on it. It has my signature on it and a quill as well. Because this one is, it still goes plenty hot for wood burning, but it gives you more temperature range in the low end for foiling. So that is that tool. Um, I am now using, I don't know if I can show it in camera because it is off the side here and it is plugged in right now. Can I get it in camera? The current, well, I don't burn myself. The current tool that I'm using, show it in the small camera, is this one here. Can I get it under there? A little bit. <laughs> there. Uh, this is the razor tip P80. Uh, now this is not modified by me in any way. This is their brand new, uh, their newest tool. It is a digital version. And it does all the same things as my analog version. It's just a digital version. Uh, the main reason I got that version, or I got this new tool from them, was because I travel overseas and I do foiling in Germany a lot and anywhere. I did foiling in uh, Singapore and the Philippines last year. So in order to work over there, I needed a machine that worked on different or on their voltage. And unfortunately, my tool can only work on their voltage using a heavy, like a, a um, transformer, which is what I used to use when I traveled with the, uh, with the Walnut Hollow pen for a while. And when before I had before the digital tool existed, that's what I used for my tool as well. Uh, but once they released uh, the digital tool, the digital tool is able to accommodate worldwide voltage. No matter where I am, I can use it without uh, an extra heavy transformer in my suitcase. So that's the tool that I use now. Uh, people always ask me which tool to use. I say if you live in North America, I recommend my tool, the analog one. Um, if you live overseas, I recommend the digital. If you have a little bit of extra money because it is more expensive, the digital one is a more modern and it it is a a better tool of of the two of them, but it is more expensive. It, it's over here. Like it can go it's red hot wood burning and, and super low as well. Overkill for just foiling. But if you want a dope pyrography tool, that's the one that I would recommend. Don't wish you uh, Tip-wise, people always ask me about the tips. Um, the pens that I use with my tool are these ones here. You can get, they sell uh, pens that have the tips built in, uh, but because I like to change my tips out and sometimes I'll sand and smooth them or me they feel like they wear out or things like that, probably aren't wearing out. I think that's just in my head. I like to change the tips. So I have this, which I believe is called the blind post pen or something like that. Don't quote me on that name, but it has changeable tips. So you can see here, I have these little, they're basically just little wires and you can even make your own. Like this is a really long, weird one I made a long time ago or I used it to cut foam when I was making a display box or something. Um, but they're just these little metal tips that have tiny little, the ones I use have tiny, tiny little ball points on the end. Uh, and then I bend them at about, I don't know what degree that is. Maybe four degrees. It's not a measured degree. I personally like to bend mine. Uh, from uh, when you buy them, they don't come bent. They come as just a straight, uh, a straight little tool or tip. And you can totally use them as a straight tip. Uh, I just personally, when I'm using the tool, I like for them to, I don't know, something about the bend has my, my hand feels more natural. Same with the Walnut Hollow tool. I would bend the tips on those as well. They were much harder to bend, but I would bend those as well because it lets me have more of my standard penmanship grip uh, when they're straight. I don't know. With this pen, it's about the same. With the other tools, I feel like I have to hold them different and it feels weird. But if I bend them, I can just hold them that way. So now I'm just used to the bend, so I have 
but that's basically uh, it for for my tools. I mean, unless people have specific questions about those. Uh, today I'm going to be foiling on paper. I'm not going to be foiling on leather like I normally do. Uh, originally, <laughs> I'll show you guys what I really wanted to do today. Um, some of you may know me. I'm the guy who likes to bite off more than he can chew quite often. And originally, this. I'm gonna go on a late night live and foil some Charlie Chaplin uh, sheet music with a silhouette of Charlie Chaplin in the bottom corner. I made up this little art uh, piece on Photoshop today and I was like, there, I can foil that, no problem. Uh, but then when I was transferring it onto a piece of foil, this is very intricate and this would take a very long time and detailed work. So we're not going to do this today. <laughs> What's going on, mom? Um, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna be foiling this today, but I will be foiling it soon. The, uh, the foil is, I would say one, like one thirtieth of the way <laughs> prepared to be foiled. Um, I will do this eventually. It's just a little too intense for today. Today, since there's been a lot of talk about it recently online, I'm going to attempt, and this may not be successful, but I'm going to attempt to foil the Moderaz letter. Uh, the famous Moderaz letter written by Blozer. Um, yeah, we're going to try to transfer this to a piece of paper in foil today. Fingers crossed it comes out nice, but who knows? <laughs> we'll see. How will that fit? So I'm gonna do it on a, I have a bigger sheet of paper than this one. Um, and my foil is eight inches wide, so I can get eight by 10. This this size printout fits on eight by 10. So technically, hey, what's going on, Colby? Technically, I should be able, this should fit on a sheet of foil, no problem. And then I'll do it on a bigger piece of paper and then cut it down so it can be matted or framed, I guess. I'll probably frame it um, eventually. My big one worry is it's going to be rather difficult to get these lines this fine um, because it's printed out so small to fit on the 8x10 piece it is very tiny. So my foiling hairlines are fine and they're finer on paper than they are when I do leather, but I don't know if they're that fine. As an example, I'll just show you just a little bit of foiling here. I'm going to do foiling warm up. Um, what you guys always see on Instagram is me taping down the foil and uh, prepping the design into the foil. You're going to see that whole process today because I haven't prepared the Moderaz letter yet, so I'm going to be doing all of that live. Um, but I want to show you that sometimes, like you don't, it's not mandatory to tape down the foil, uh, and sometimes it can be really fun to just kind of go for it. Um, obviously, taping it down results in less buckling and things like that, but you don't have to pre-plan a design either. You, for example, if I was doing like name cards or place cards for a wedding or something like that, I would hold the foil, something like this. Oh, we're getting, let me turn my blowouts because the foil is so shiny. There we go, that's better. All right, so I think my temperature is right. I can just hold it tight. And I can just write. And this is something I pretty much do every time I foil anything. Uh, even if it's like the leather that I foil all the time, I will always take a scrap piece of paper and do a really quick test foil just to see, uh, just to make sure that it works. Because all material is slightly different and sometimes, I don't know, maybe the tools act a little different from time to time. So there we go. The, with paper, unfortunately, the peel isn't as satisfying as with, um, as with regular leather. Because the foil sticks to the leather when I'm foiling. But on paper, it doesn't. It sticks a little bit, but not nearly as much. So it usually releases right as, as I'm foiling. 
So it's less of a peel and more of a slide away. Because <laughs> it doesn't stick. But those lines, like that's a decent hairline. With that hairline, oh gosh, this is so tiny. But I think, I think I can still make it look good. And it'll be nice and visible and shiny. I didn't know that you could foil onto paper. Yeah, so I foil onto leather, but you can foil onto pretty much anything um, using different techniques and whatnot. The only papers that don't accept foil, like Rhodia or really smooth, shiny paper, doesn't accept foil very well. Uh, Colby, I know what's going on in your brain right now. You're thinking about your pen holders because you've been doing your wood burning uh, designs on them, which look dope, by the way. You could totally foil on a, on a holder. I have before um, for myself. Plastics, um, it depends on the, the squishiness. Um, plastics, some of them will foil, but it's not always going to be permanent. Um, but you can foil on pretty much anything. I foiled on wood. I foiled on stone. That required some different technique. Uh, because you do need to get the, um, uh, it needs to adhere somehow. And this is a hard tip and with a hard surface, like if I was foiling on granite or tile or something like that, it wouldn't, it wouldn't touch enough, if that makes sense. Um, I'm working on trying to create a tip that has a little bit of give to it, but can still heat up, um, to see if I can do that for foiling on things that are, are tougher. Um, but it's not going to be always a permanent fix. Like, you'll usually be able to scratch it off if it's foiled onto something with a smooth, shiny surface. Oh, what did mom post here? Well, you're foiling. My project is throwing together. What is my mother talking about? Mom speaking Zentangle. I don't speak Zentangle. <laughs> you want a gold foil tattoo? So, fun fact or random story. I have tried to foil my skin before. It hurts. Don't do it. Um, it's possible, but it is painful. It is hot. <laughs> um, foil, the particular foil I use, and somebody asked this last week, and I didn't have the answer to the question. Foil sticks at anywhere between or is recommended at 230 to 320 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's a large range, which is why I always recommend a tool that has temperature control, because even from the factory, the foil requires different temperatures. Um, one, uh, one thing that I will say that I have done with success, I wonder if I can do it here right now. You can foil Your fingernail, I don't know if that'll show up on camera, it's in focus or not. I have a little squiggly on my finger. No, you can't see it. It's because it's very, very fine. I would want to use a a thicker point if I was gonna do that. Um, but you can foil on your fingernail. You just have to go, I would say you go in like small doses and give it time to uh to to cool off in between or it can get too hot. And uh, another thing to be careful of, any of you have heard that. Uh, that story where, like, if you put a piece of paper on your arm and, like, hold a candle to it or a lighter to it, because there's no oxygen under the paper, you don't feel the the lighter or the, or the match or whatever burning you through the paper. Uh, you don't feel it until the paper is removed, then you feel it. So that's sort of how it could work for foiling. So please don't, basically just don't try to foil yourself. Um, I'm ridiculous, and I just really wanted to try it. Uh, and I have foiled my fingernails from time to time. Uh, but again, it's not permanent. It can be scratched off because it's not formulated to stick to a smooth surface like that. It, the, the fingernail would need to be prepped in a way to, uh, to take the foil. And yet, you can foil onto wood. Look, here's just a random... This is a scrap piece of wood that I didn't use from a piece of Ikea furniture. And using a thicker tip 
is always gonna work better than using the finest fine tip. Um, the thicker the tip, basically, the better contact with the foil and the, the substrate or the material you're gonna have. But, just to show you on a piece of wood, unprepped or anything, I believe this is pine wood? And I don't know the speed that I should be going for wood. Every material kind of requires a different temperature and different speed. But there you go. Let me see if we can get focus on. Wood. Is that focused? I can't really tell. Not really. But it's foiled clean. One thing you're going to have to do with wood, if you're foiling anything that, um, I'm scrolled up in the chat. If you're foiling any anything that's, that's, uh, hard, like a wood, um, I primarily foil leather and, and soft things, leather, paper, cardstock, stuff like that. If you're foiling something that's hard, one thing you have to be aware of is the foil has this adhesive on the back. That's this brown color that you see. Uh, good night, mom. <laughs> um, this brown color is basically like an, an adhesive, or that's the glue that you're melting um, so the foil sticks. And even on paper, you see if I press down and move, look at all that paper didn't do it. You can see I scratch, um, it can scratch the glue, and anywhere that glue is scratched, it's not gonna stick. There's no longer any glue there. So, like, if I was messing with foil and I get these, uh, it gets scratched like that. Any place where there's no longer that brown color isn't gonna foil. And oftentimes, when I'm foiling on papers and stuff like that, because they're coarser, even though they're not super, like they're still soft-ish, but because they're coarser, oftentimes when the foil is lying on the paper, even when you're doing like the lineup, you can potentially scratch the bottom of the foil and it will affect the um, the transfer. So you have to be really careful with your foil. It's also um, super important that your fingers, I guess step one would be wash your hands. If your fingers are oily, anywhere you touch, right now I just washed my hands before the live, so I can touch the back of this foil and you're not gonna see anything. But if I were to like wipe my forehead and then go on here, maybe I'll do that as an example later. I don't want to do it because I'll be foiling today and I don't want to get my hands greasy. But if your hands, my forehead's greasy uh, right now, apparently. Um, but if your hands had any like grease on them or lotion or stuff like that, that comes off and it will ruin or deactivate the, um, the adhesive that's on the back. So you got to be careful. That's the sensitive, delicate part of the foil. But, oh, what I was saying about the wood. So what happened here, I have these little, it's like a little, it's grayish, and that's the other side of the of the glue. So when I foiled wood, I have this little grayish area around it that came off of the foil. Now that should, it's being stubborn, but it should technically, oh, and I'm spilling my tea. There. That should come off quite a bit with just an eraser or something like that. Sometimes, some materials, it doesn't like to come off of, um, but usually the, uh, the foil, uh, the residual uh, piece of stuff will just sort of either brush away or, or erase away after use. Materials like leather and stuff don't seem to have that issue. Paper has it a little bit, but not as much. I just spilled my tea all over my table because I was shaking it. I need to take my table in to a, to a furniture restoration person and see if somebody can tighten it up. I don't want to do it myself because I really like it. There's a lot of things about foil that uh, nobody, myself included, uh, has a clue about. Um, as I think I've said in the past, nobody taught me to foil. Uh, before I started foiling, calligraphy and foiling wasn't really a thing. Um, so everything that I've learned in foiling over the past many years that I've been doing it is just 
my own testing and I continually test stuff. In fact, I was testing a new technique on something just earlier today. Um, so there's a lot of factors and variables and things to know, and there's there's no real resource out there to know them. Um, aside from, I mean, I could tell people them, but I haven't, I don't talk about foiling all that much. Maybe I should. Maybe this is the start of talking about foiling. It's just, I mean, it's such a, it's such a cool thing. Um, but it can be insanely frustrating because the variables can be really interesting. Um, yeah. So there we go. Um, what was I showing? I was doing foil warm-up. So what I tend to do before every foiling project, um, like I said, I will always do a test piece, but that the test is less just to... It's so, sort of like you test ink when you're working with certain papers. You get a scrap of that paper and you want to see, is the ink going to bleed? Blah, 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 stuff like that. Um, with foiling, I've always said it's best to have, like, you get a specific pressure that is good for the material you're working on, and then you maintain a consistent speed as if you were a computer, basically. What's back going on here? There we go. You work at a very specific or a very constant speed. Now, what that speed is, it's always different. Um, so I've kind of gotten figured out what works for foil and or for leather and some papers and things like that but it's always good to give tests to see what your ideal speed is and it's also going to be different depending on the size of the tool you're using like i said it's always a little more challenging the finer you get the more challenging the foil can be Oh, made that shade way too big. Don't worry about getting this. Is a... This is one of the biggest habits that penmen do. We'll do the outline all at a uniform speed. Going on, Fuzzy. And then we fill in the outline like this. <laughs> Just like scribbling. We gotta remember that this is a... We have to maintain that constant speed. No, that's not a, gonna be a perfect fill, but that's okay. Another thing um, that us as penmen tend to forget is the upstroke. We always do our connective stroke faster than the rest of our letters most of the time. So we have to make sure that when we're writing, we're not going ha, ha, ha. We have to keep that nice and even speed the entire time. Similar to how, if any of you guys have ever studied or learned anything about um, tattooing, foiling is nothing like tattooing, but it's similar in the way that to tattoo lettering, the application is completely different than to write lettering, as far as the, like, the, the direction of your lines and all that kind of stuff. I don't know a ton about tattooing, I have tattooed a little bit, um, but when you're doing writing and lettering, different than when you're actually writing, writing and lettering. So this is the same thing. It's more similar to actual writing, but still different. And it's... <laughs> I had the shaded top of the D and my brain just went, that's a T, cross it. So now it's, is it ideal or ideal? Yeah, I learned from, from Teos one. Uh, at the Scriptorium Berlin. Sad, this is, I think, my first winter in four or five years that I haven't gone to Berlin. Normally, I'm there sort of right now, or either right after this or right prior to now, I would be in, in Germany. This is my first year not going there. It makes me sad. <laughs> I did heal. <laughs> this... This is one scary part about foiling something like the Madaraz letter today. So I want to keep talking to you guys and keep like the dialogue going, but we all know from these 20 lives where my brain just starts to float away when I'm chatting and I obviously don't pay attention to what I'm doing at all. 
He's a dope calligrapher. Um, he's sick. Him and I originally met because um, I had followed him for a long time because uh, I was into calligraphy and calligraffiti and that kind of stuff before before he got into tattooing. Um, and he was writing with an oblique holder once and I just direct messaged him and I was like, bro, you need better tools. Like, you're too good for the tool you're using. So let's fix what you got going on. And then that sort of opened our dialogue and now consider him like one of my best friends. Um, I don't see him basically ever, um, but he's one of the coolest dudes ever. There we go. That's a loose. Very traditional Spencerian A there. I think we're just gonna dive straight into uh, straight into this letter. This might take some time. It might be my brain might be underestimating how much work this is actually gonna be. All right, let's do it. So step one. You have your design. I printed out my design. This is the size I want it. Foil. Wait. Well, technically, step one, wash your hands. Hands are washed. Good. On that one. Step two, take a sip of tea. Because you spilled some, but you still haven't drank it. Awesome. And please feel free if any other people join. Um and have questions about foiling, ask them. Uh, I've never done like a, I did a, a quick, or that video on Instagram on foiling, but there's a lot of people that have a lot of questions about foiling. It's such a cool technique. Um, and I know it got like trendy for a while, but then it kind of died. I don't think the tools that were on the market at the time were all that great. And it, uh, it kind of fizzled a little bit, unfortunately. Step three back and forth for 20 to 30 minutes. Um, okay, what I'm gonna do normally, I would just use my desktop is leather, is my boiling leather. But recently, I actually, I didn't spill, but I was doing some, some writing on old sheets of paper and the white ink, you can see there's little white dots and stuff. And I'm nervous that if those are sticky at all, they will stick. It will pull off the um, the adhesive. So I'm gonna get another piece of leather. I don't have one. Usually I have a piece of leather within my within my reach. Here. Get a little bit of color in our shot today. Burgundy. Oh, do I clash now? My shirt is more burgundy than, than the burgundy of my blotter. Oh well. Okay. So, I'm gonna set that here like this. I'm going to get, I already have a piece of foil here. I wanna try the Memory Keepers one. Um, I don't wanna buy one because I have really expensive foiling tools that do everything but I'm really curious about it because I get asked questions about it all the time. Um, and I don't have answers to them because I've never used them. So I want, I also want to try the Memory Keepers one. All right, we're gonna put this foil face down. What I'm actually gonna do, What's going on, Ashok? Welcome. I'm gonna really quickly cut this design a little closer to the lettering. These are things I could have done before the video. You guys are getting the real, full, step-by-step -step process. Foiling a piece. Obviously, the things I foil are usually not nearly this involved. Sometimes they are. I do want to start foiling more intricate, more involved things. Okay, a little bit more off. Basically, what I'm just trying to do is to have a sort of 
foil buffer around the whole piece because I'm going to tape it down so that it doesn't move during the transfer process. Burgundy color is pretty. I have to order some more. I think I'm running low on them. All right, next step, tape. Uh, any masking tape, washing, washi tape, anything like that. I use black masking tape from Uline just because it's black and that keeps the video looking nice and clean and stuff like that. Some washi tapes sometimes don't stick as well as I want them to to the foil, so I don't always use washi tape. We'll just stick that down. On smaller pieces, you don't have to be quite this uh, careful. I'm being rather tedious today to keep everything nice and smooth and flat, just because this is a really large piece. But with smaller pieces, I mean, it's not gonna move as much, so you don't really have to worry about it. Thank you, hopefully it'll be cool. We'll see. I don't think I've ever foiled a piece on paper, so this is also kind of a bit of a, a first time thing for me. Now, the reason I have it to leather, and it's not, it is taped to the leather just because the, the foil is extended out. The important part right now is that the paper is taped to the foil, uh, so they're not gonna move. Uh, they are also taped to this foil so I can rotate the foil around. Uh, the important part, or it's really important rather to do it on uh, on a soft material, and I'll show you why. What I'm doing now is just having, I'm putting the foil down on the, uh, or it's on the leather, and I'm just indenting it. I always say similar to how you would write in a, or on like tin foil. I'm not putting a ton of pressure. I'm just getting, give, doing enough pressure just to give an indent so I can see where I'm going. You guys can see in there how much it's indenting. Um, and the important part is when I flip it over that none of the, or that the coloring of the adhesive is still there. And I'll see if I can do an example here. If I got something hard, for example, just this ruler, if I were to do this same thing on a hard surface, or if I used a point that was really, really fine, I'll see if it'll show it. Ah, it still kind of worked. Um, but the, you can't really see it. The adhesive will sometimes get damaged or ruined on that way. Or if you press too hard on a surface like leather, you can stretch the, the adhesive or you, you're stretching the plastic and that's forcing the adhesive to stretch. And once it stretches, it won't adhere properly, um, when you're foiling. So where that becomes a, or why that's important to know is there's nothing worse than prepping a whole, like if I prep this entire design and say I didn't really know and I was pressing too hard, and then I peeled it off, put it on my piece of paper or other piece of leather and foiled it, and it didn't foil nicely, uh, it could have had nothing to do with the actual foiling and it all to do with the preparation. It's, Colby, don't, I would, I mean, I would, I'll still manage to misspell something. It's almost a guarantee. The thing is like the, the outline is so faint. I think it shows up sometimes on video more than it does in person because the foil moves around when you're foiling, the lighting is always changing uh, where it's reflecting. And sometimes you're be in the middle of an oval and it just disappears. The line that you're following because of there's a highlight on it or something like that. So you just have to know the design you're doing and just trust yourself to continue that oval. And then until you see, oh, there we go. There's, there's, I'm back on track. That happens a lot. So it's one of those things you just gotta be, you gotta be confident to go for it. If there wasn't a design there, uh, it's just a guideline. Imagine foiling. You could, I mean, if we have time today, maybe I will foil uh, like this, for example, Late Night Live. I mean, it's not an entire letter, but it was just done freehand. Um, 
If you can slowly write freehand a letter, you can totally foil freehand a letter. I wouldn't do a replication of a vintage piece because there's no way I would do it properly or it wouldn't be exact at all. But it's the same as writing slowly. Um, if you have it taped down and the foil can't move, <laughs> Ashok, you want me to foil your letter? I already have. You mean I have to write another one? I can't just send the one I wrote in February? It's up there. <laughs> oh, have fun at work, Mamed. We'll see you later. But how would you do without guidelines? So I guess you freehand the guidelines. Some penmen don't use guidelines. Or you could also, very simply, I mean, because we're just lining or we're just indenting the material, you can give yourself guidelines. Am I on the... I'm trying to stay off of the piece right now. But you can, the same way you would line like black paper or something for a certificate or a calligraphy design or people line their envelopes. I guess technically you could use a laser liner as well. I don't own one of those and I've never used them, but wedding calligraphers could totally use a laser liner and foil from a laser liner. The only annoying part is to do a piece of writing. You're going to want to tape it down and that's time consuming. Actually, just to, as an example of how little we know about, or how little I knew about foiling when I got started, I didn't really know about like, how the adhesive worked and stuff like that. I was trying to imagine in my brain, thought that it would be brilliant if I could invent a way to have like peel and stick foil, kind of like a sticky note. So it was sort of sticky, but not super sticky. So I was trying to use repositionable adhesive to spray that on a material so then I could stick the foil on, foil it, and then peel the foil off. Little did I know, the all the adhesive, like I put a whole piece of foil down on this piece, did a bunch of foiling. And when I did the peel, the entire piece, because it was all sprayed with the repositionable adhesive, the entire piece was solid gold. <laughs> No, the, the lettering didn't show up at all um, because it was all because it's just glue, basically. Oh, there's a good example. I don't know if you can see it. Those lines that I just did with the ruler, I pressed too hard with the really fine point. I usually use sort of a, a more dull point, similar to a like a Bic pen roundness or a little bit even more round than that. I don't know if you can see in the video, but there is, I can see like shimmeriness shining through those lines, and where that shimmer is, there is no longer any adhesive there. So if I'm foiling, the foil is only going to stick on either side of that line and not right in the middle where the shimmeriness is. So those lines I basically just ruined because I pressed too hard. So that's something to be aware of. So now I'm going to use the duller end of my, I'm just using a ball stylus here. Um, I've used dull pencils, I've used pens before, you can literally use anything that has a rounded point to it. Oh yeah, fountain liner, or phantom liner, totally would work. I don't own one of those either. Um, but those, yeah, any of those tricks could totally be used for foil. The only, uh, thing that there's no sort of shortcut for is taping the foil down. Foil has to be... You're doing a big piece. One word, if you can fit between your fingers, you can hold the foil tight enough to do one thing. But if you're doing a big thing, um, especially since the foil doesn't really stick to the paper, it's gonna move around a lot. And if you're foiling and it moves, or like if it's, i do this example. If I'm foiling here, you can see it, well, it buckles up in front of, like in front of where my, we're imagining this is the foil pen buckles up and then if I let go it goes back to flat and then if I start again where the ending point is that's not the same point on the material uh, that's a little easier with leather because it usually sticks but not always so that's another a lot of things to keep in mind it sounds a lot more complicated than it is though <laughs> you got a magnetic table and steel foil. You might be onto something, Colby. 
All right, now I'm just going to write this design. I'm going over with just a little bit of pressure, not too much. Now, because these lines are so fine, it's going to be almost impossible for me to see exactly where I'm going. So much of tonight, I'm now realizing is going to be me basically just writing this letter, not freehand, because I'll have a little bit of a guide, but sort of freehand. I'll have to do a lot of trusting myself like in a lot of the lowercase letters and just look at my spacing and try to get it right. This is incredibly tiny. I also apologize if my head gets in the camera like that from time to time. Um, foiling doesn't use the same posture as ornamental penmanship and I will inevitably lean in too far from time to time. Is the ca oh the camera totally is on autofocus? Let me. Whoops! Don't record. Oh no! Let's lock focus. Here we go. Now we're locked. It should stop going back and forth now. Thank you for telling me that. I didn't realize it was still on autofocus. These lines might be a little, or these lowercase letters might be a little too small to work in foil. I'm a little nervous. We'll see. Yeah, it was, it was probably either trying to focus potentially my hair, but probably the back of my hand. Um, I also want to point out that, like right now, you can see I'm, I'm laying it over a piece of paper. This is my guide. If I want something to be exact, let's go down on zero. Um, you, that's how you, that's how I do that. But oftentimes too, when I'm doing like foiling bags and stuff like that, I won't, I don't do this type style of transfer. I will just take the foil like this and Create a piece just on the foil. Like, cool, there's that, there's a B. And I'll just create as if I was writing in pencil. And you can tweak things and change things as much as you want. And then once you, then you just follow that, if that makes sense. You can't erase, but you can prepare a design um, directly on the foil as well which is what I do most of the time to speed up the process when I'm hand foiling on site for, for stores and things like that. Because there's definitely not enough time to do this whole tape down procedure in a store. You want to tape it and go for it, tape it to the material and go for it. We don't have time for the transfer. I often don't press hard enough during this stage because I get paranoid that I'm going to damage the foil. So sometimes when I finish, it's almost like I didn't put the design in there at all. Jeez, these are tiny. We're going to have to cross our fingers that this is going to work. I always found this space between the H or the S and the C in this letter to it's very big compared to the spacing on the rest of the letter because he didn't have an egg he doesn't do exit strokes on his s's and he didn't do an entry to the c as i'm going through this letter i'm gonna we'll analyze this letter as well as we go just for fun this is not going to be the exciting part of this live. <laughs> well, none of it might be the exciting part. The peel at the end, maybe, if there's a peel, depending on the paper. It sticks or not. 
I was thinking about doing all this earlier, but I wanted you guys to be able to see this process. I just don't think I took into account how long this process takes. The 11 pages. If you guys are interested in seeing the 11 pages that this article is referring to, I created a PDF of those 11 pages that you can find on my Discord. Or, I mean, you can hunt through the Business Educator and find them as well. They're all in there. Um, I just hunted through. It is a little hard to tell what is part of the 11 pages and what is part of the uh, Madara's sort of memorial issues of the Business Educator. Because unfortunately, he passed away shortly after this was posted. Or after, sort of, right towards the end of when the 11 pages were published. That's when he passed away, unfortunately. So you can use the machine directly through the paper. That is something that I'm currently testing. Through paper? No. Um, but I'm testing some other materials, like parchment, or I'm trying to find some really thin, heat-resistant uh, papers um, to see if I can get it. Because you can foil through paper, um, but the, the results aren't as good yet in my testing as foiling directly onto the foil. So I'm trying to find a way to make that possible. Yeah, this ball stylus is way too big for these lowercase letters. <laughs> Unfortunately, Fozzy, because these lines are so thin and I'm going to be foiling on paper, I don't know that there's going to be much of appeal. Um, the foil doesn't really stick to the paper like it does the leather. We might not have a real awesome, there'll be a reveal, but it might not be a good peel, unfortunately. Funny spacing between this N and the S, too much space. That's right, Blozer. I'm criticizing your spacing. Spent so many hours looking at this letter. You might be one of my favorite penmen, but that doesn't mean I won't critique your spacing. Can I zoom in? I think I can. That's about as close as I can get today. Sorry, the camera is farther away than normal because I had my head was getting in the way with where I normally have the camera set up. This is like Perfect E. Absolutely perfect. I don't actually know if I zoomed in at all. Sorry if I might not have got it any closer even. I'm trying to find a better lens for my current setup. And in all of my research, it really doesn't seem like Sony or any of the 
Sony mount lenses currently in production are what I want or what I need. Apparently, the lens I have in my brain doesn't exist in real life. Unfortunately. You have all the, all the, like, scraps of foil, you mean? Oh, where was I? Yes. I used to keep all of my foil peelings uh, in a box, but then I ended up having way too many. So I ended up throwing them away. <laughs> I mean, I always call foil ghosts is what I call the image of the underside of blotters. I keep forgetting to take photos of foil ghosts. Or I send them to people. I need to remember to do that because it looks cool. Oh my goodness, this is time consuming. Boiling this is gonna take forever! Trust my own writing ability to get these forms correctly. I'll just use this guide for hopefully a little bit of spacing. Even though I don't really have to think of spacing, I just have to squish it as much as physically possible. <laughs> This is such a cool point on this letter. O, F, F, H with the three ascenders and the two descenders together. It's my one of my favorite parts of this letter, followed by the worst part of this entire letter. Beautiful F, beautiful F, beautiful H, A, N, and then a D that's off slant. That D is on a total different slant than the rest of these ascenders and descenders. Putting those ghost foils on a surface and running iron over it. Uh, I mean, technically, yeah, it would give, it should. If the iron is the right temperature, it would give you uh, a reversed foiling effect. I don't know if I've ever done reversed foiling. I've done a similar design when I was foiling some block lettering. Never thought of trying to foil with the leftover foil. An interesting idea. Time consuming. Not really sure why he used that descender on that key. Makes it look like a key. word inimitatable I'll give it a shot 
all right, Colby. Sorry you don't get to see uh, the the fun part of the foiling process. But have a good night. Maybe I should have done part of this flyer. Three more lines. My hand gets sore during this part. I'm not used to pressing down all the time, because I don't usually have to in penmanship. But in foiling, you gotta do a whole lot of pressing. What are you doing, man? Let's do movement. And you can do movement foiling a little bit. Um, I believe I demonstrated that once. Um, it is very tricky, though. And the results aren't always uh, clean. Almost there. And then the slow part comes. So. And in the Ponca City Blackwell area, 68 degrees today. And I admit that I'm going to do a birthday. A birthday giveaway? That's fun. That's very nice of you, Marilyn. That's how the hobbits in Lord of the Rings dealt with birthdays. On your birthday, you gave gifts. You didn't receive gifts. Also, as his peas are sort of windswept a little bit, quite often, they don't go up like a tea does. They tip to the right. I'm realizing 
feel like I've noticed that before, but I'm noticing it even more as I write them today. Sorry, teacup, you have to move. Teacup, tea bug. Unfortunately, the foiling won't have the same airiness and flair as the original because I can't quite foil as fast as he wrote it. One of the most beautiful bees in penmanship. Longest descender of the entire letter. The key to this B, if you're ever trying to learn how to write uh, this B, the key to it, when you get to this bottom swell, you start transitioning from horizontal over, you go not fully, or from angled oval, not fully horizontal, and then you transition past horizontal till you're going almost down. It's right on these two loops, you have to transition down in order to get that exit stroke. That's the key. All right, let's take our foil or our paper off now. Let's see how it looks. Mm -hmm. I always have bits of masking tape everywhere around my desk. <laughs> I try to reuse it as much as possible because I go through so much of it when I'm foiling, but I end up with a ton of it. I mean, the bee, this bee is in other places, um, but it's Blozer's the one who likely did it the most, since it was in his name, the one he used for his signature a lot. Funny though, in when he wrote E.W. Blozer, he didn't usually use this bee. He used a much simpler bee most of the time. He used it when he wrote Zaner and Blozer, but when he wrote E.W. Blozer, it was a more simplified bee, usually. They wrote their names. I love that they all had multiple ways of writing their name. Okay. Let's sort of indent it in there enough so we can see at least what we're doing. And now just to help myself out, I am gonna give myself a baseline so I can see what I'm doing just a little bit more. I've also been Going with the idea of doing pieces that are, um, right there, let me go finish. Some blind embossed uh, pieces, which could be really cool. I gotta do some research and find really good embossable paper. Sorry, my head's gonna get in the way. Very light pressure when I put these lines in, but it's just to give myself a baseline to follow. Because the indent is very, very fine on those letters, it's very difficult to see. I'm pretty sure I'm foiling this smaller than he actually wrote it, which is kind of stupid. 
Oops. What? We've come too far to turn back now. Biggest things you'll deal with when you're foiling is static. My ruler is essentially stuck to the paper right now. There's always a lot of static when you're foiling. Gosh, that line's hard to see. Last line. Ooh, I was really faint up here. I can hardly see it at all. Whoop. Well, it'll turn out how it turns out. Okay. We no longer need to do a quick check to make sure. There's no shiny bits, and there aren't, so that's good. I didn't damage the adhesive. We no longer need the burgundy block. Put that to the side. We'll get out a piece of papier, like so. It should work. We'll use this, and then I might end up cutting it. Just for fun, why don't I actually make this square? I happen to have my T-square and everything on my desk right now because I took Skylar's class on the weekend. Here we go. That's not square. Square enough. Sweet. Spot. This is sort of a fruitless effort. I try to get all the air out, but the foil kind of does what foil wants most of the time. Foil doesn't really care what you want it to do. Stand up to this so I get it nice and clean. I'm gonna use new pieces of tape because I want them to extend past the edges. No super length of tape and apologize. The other ones were a little small. Now the most important thing to consider when you're taping down a piece, whether you're taping to leather or paper or wood or anything, when you're sticking down the foil. You want to get the foil tight so that it buckles as little as possible, but at the same time, you don't want it to stretch, uh, which happens a lot when you're foiling you're foiling on something hard. It's rather, rather difficult to get it to stretch on paper because the paper just sort of uh, bends, so it doesn't create much of a, a force, but if the foil gets too stretched, um, then when you press down into it with the foiling machine, uh, you end up, like I said earlier, stretching it, and then it doesn't stick. Or it'll stick, but it won't stick as good. You'll get a, a poor result most of the time, or sometimes. So I like to stick down the foil side, and then you kind of do this, 
when you pull it. This is where you want to pull so that it smooths it but doesn't stretch it. You can see you always get these little, sorry, I'm totally, you can see what I'm talking about. You get these little creases. It's almost impossible not to. It would be amazing if those creases just never happened, but they do. Unfortunately, maybe one day I'll find a way to tape a foiling piece and not have those little creases in it, but I have taped thousands and Okay. Because I was doing some random projects up at the my cutting table. I don't really need to measure this, but just just because I have my T square here, I may as well. I'm gonna be trimming this later, anyways. But myself. I don't have a pen. Whatever. I don't need a pen. Use the ruler. Big of a piece of paper to deal with on my desk. Here we go. There's the piece ready to be foiled. I think there's a typo on the third line. Are you joking? How can you even see? I'm looking at it this close and I can't even see. Basically now, I'm just following the lines and the general spacing, and I'm gonna try to, I'm just writing it as, as I would write it. Luckily, I've written this letter many times in my penmanship practice, so some of it comes off the cuff. But I can almost guarantee you there'll be a spelling mistake somewhere in here. I should almost put one in on purpose. Just so it's micified. Now, just to double check, because this is different paper than the paper I was, than the line paper I was practicing on before. I'm going to do some. You can see this is I was doing testing earlier today. This is all testing for um, for doing this piece. Um, this was trying to get the right thickness of line. To be able to do all these little music notes. I was like, that's gonna take me hours. I can't do that on a live video. Heck no. So, let's do some tests and make sure our temperature is good for this paper as well. It should be. I tested all this earlier today, but I never test too much. Sorry, my hair is probably in the screen. Oh yeah, not bad. Cool. Oh, my hair wasn't in the screen, but nor was where I was foiling, was it? Let me make sure. Where am I going to be foiling? Oh, is that? Oh yeah, that's good for you guys. Okay, cool. If this was a, a live class, Every time, this is one thing that's hilarious about teaching calligraphy classes or any classes in front of a camera. Anytime my head would go into camera, I guarantee the class would say, your head's in camera, your hair's in, ca your hair's in frame. But I don't have that luxury in a live video, so sorry. If I go in, I won't know until I look. Here we go. This is stressful, ladies and gentlemen. And actually, one thing I'm going to do I'm going to use this sheet of paper actually over top just because I don't know if this is a real thing but there's always a part in my brain that is nervous that the heat of my hand is going to somehow while it's sitting here foiling these ones that it's going to stick the foil here I don't as my hand does not heat up that hot but 
I just get nervous and pressure and all that kind of stuff. Okay. This close by water on letter. There, why not? There. That's what you're replicating, Mike. Quick phone check. I'm killing time, can you tell? Or ice cream. I have cookies though. I could have cookies. Okay. Whatever. Let's do it. Yep, my head's definitely gonna get in for it. Oh goodness, it's almost impossible to see up there. I can't even see the... Wait. I can't see where the... Shade goes. Yeah, I can't see these words. I did these first two. These other lines are better. This first line is so sorry. I know I'm getting right in the camera. Okay, I have to go from this angle. I know I'm, my head's gonna be in the way, but it's the only way I can see this part. I won't be this close on the next pages, I promise. Or on the next lines, I mean. I have to stop myself from going into autopilot. I'm going too quick. Remembering that this is not penmanship, this is foiling. I will likely, when the whole piece is finished, before I peel it, go over these shades, make sure they're clean.
This is gonna be time consuming. Okay, date finished. <laughs> Sorry, my head is fully in frame for most of that. I apologize. Next, friends of penmanship. Part of this letter that I've written the most. This is one of those pieces, if I wasn't on video right now, I would be doing this entire thing basically like that, directly over top of the piece. Because it's so small. So I definitely could have written harder when I was prepping this for foil. Whoops. This is one of those hindsight 2020 moments. It's a little tidy of, sorry, I'm fully in camera. Lowercase go pretty quickly. Capitals. Time can. If I could see, it would be better. I need to find 
find a way to... It's reflecting from the light directly at where I'm looking at it. So I can't see it hardly at all. I'm gonna find an angle that I can see it. This is terrible. Uh, don't do posture like this. <laughs> Have I ever burned myself? Um, not badly. Like, I've touched it before. It's not really hot enough to... Like, a quick touch doesn't burn. If it sat on me, it would it would burn me. Uh, but it's not crazy, crazy hot. Um, I've burned things around me, or I've dropped the pen. But that normally happens when I'm uh, blind embossing foil. So I'm working a lot hotter when I do that. I will note, my posture is terrible right now. But my chair is way back, and my back is still flat. Not hunched. But it is still bad posture. I'm just trying to get a an angle where I can see what the heck I'm writing without getting my head in the camera. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to make you stay. It's unfortunately not going to be a very uh, quick process. And tonight might be one of the nights if we go, if it doesn't, if I don't get it done before midnight, I can't do this in black light. So I will probably keep the lights normal if we hit midnight tonight. But I want to get it done before midnight. We'll see if that's possible. What kind of tool am I using? Uh, Jenny, I went over the tools at the beginning of the video. I don't know if you can rewind while we're live, but this video will, um, will be posted once the live is over and you can check it out. I'm currently using a razor tip P80 uh, digital pyrography or wood burning tool. I also have uh, one of my own, uh, my own branded tool that razor tip uh, modifies for me that you can buy from John Neal Books. But yeah, you can rewind the beginning. We uh, it's one of the first things I talked about when the when the live started. Yep, shimmery shimmery things are difficult to use. Okay, the writing is starting to get a little better. It's still hard to see, but I feel like if I'm over here. I don't think I'm in your guys' way. I'm also trying to do it so I'm not walking with my head. I feel like an acrobat. Okay, I can at least see Madaraz's name this time. Problem. What happens? Like I just did that little stroke, ending the M. When I did that, it made the A and the D invisible. Now I can't see the A and the D because the foil got all twisty there. 
Toiling exact. Sharing you. Oh, if I could just sit a little better. Line two finished. Uh, if the foil's buckling, the best thing you can do is when you when you tape it down, just to try to get it as smooth as possible. If the material you're working on is bendy, uh, like when I work on purses or bags, they bend and it can make things really difficult. I'll usually try to stuff them so you get the material material you're foiling, foiling on be as stiff or as, not stretched, but smooth on a surface as possible before you start. And that'll help keep the foil from buckling too much. But the foil is, especially on big ovals and things like that, the foil is inevitably gonna buckle a fair bit. Gosh, does it get any better? A little bit really didn't press hard at all. I was nervous, I guess. One thing I could do in this instance is uh, if, like if I was doing this at home and I mean I'm home, but not on a live video, I would potentially go over it again um, while it's here just really quickly with this or right when I peeled it or when I took the paper off before I took it off the soft leather before putting it on the paper. I maybe would have given it a once over with uh, the point of your stylus just really lightly, but it's just an extra step that makes things even more time consuming, so I didn't do that. I maybe should have.
one of the most frustrating things about foiling is there's no way to know if this is working. There's a possibility that nothing I'm doing right now is sticking to the paper, and we would never know until the very end when I peel it. going a little too fast on some of these lowercase letters. Oh, I messed up. Darn it. I did the wrong variation of the F. Shoot. Whoops. Well. I swore it looked like a standard one. Um, I could write it with a Sharpie. I don't usually like to do that. Um, well, because what I'm writing is from a printed thing. So transferring it or getting it transferred with a Sharpie. I mean, I could write over top of what I did now with a, with a marker or something. But usually that's one extra step. Normally, I don't have quite as much difficulty seeing as I do now. But yeah, writing with a Sharpie or a pen or anything that sticks to the foil uh, is definitely... A uh, smart idea. The one thing you have to be aware of a little bit, and it's just, it's a minor, minor factor, but if you're working with a finicky material or a finicky foil, depending on the foil you use, um, sometimes even like the the material that's there, the black of the of the sharpie, uh, the residual ink that's sitting on top of the foil, your machine tool will sort of scrape that. Um, and that can affect the temperature as well. Not always, but a little bit. Um, it's not usually a, a deal breaker, but it's something to keep in mind. Also, on the topic of Sharpies and whatnot, um, when there's ink on the page, it makes it a little bit difficult. When I'm doing really, really fine stuff like this, it, find, it, it can make it a little difficult to find exactly where my boiling point is touching the foil or the, or the paper. Um, so if I do a lift to drop back down, or it can just, it makes it a little bit more challenging. It can make it a little bit more challenging to see sometimes. Again, not all.
Line two, done. <laughs> we get in there. Slowly but surely, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, of course, Jenny. Any help I can provide. Also, some of the, thing, the things I say may also not be good advice for all machines and whatnot. Uh, if you're doing something that's a lot more freeform, for example, you can definitely use a piece of foil, for example, to... Like if I just needed a design to follow. Oh. Where's a Sharpie? You could definitely do something like this. <laughs> Ignore that crummy letters. But you could do something like that. I'm not even on camera. You can write on it uh, with the with the Sharpie. And the Sharpie is not completely indelible. It'll still, it can still wipe off a little bit, but it gives you a more solid thing. But if you're trying to get super, super fine hairlines, um, super, super fine Sharpie works, but it can still, it can be difficult to see the point. Um, but most of the time, I imagine it would be helpful and, and a good idea to do it that way. I might just be a glutton for punishment as well. <laughs> Only a million more to go. Good song. Okay, back to four. That's enough of a break. I'm almost at it. I really want to try the foiling quill. I'm curious. I want to try the version they have that works on the cricket. Because I have a cricket, and I'm curious. I like the idea of using that reminding myself to slow down because it's lettering I'm going quickly see and on this of he used the standard uh, F exit makes it challenging for me These lowercase letters are going to look like Michael Ward lowercase letters and not blows or lowercase letters because I can't, I'm not following his exact form. <laughs>
<laughs> hey Giovanna, welcome. Well, you're out. Yeah, it takes a lot of patience, uh, but also, I mean, I've been hand foiling for how many years now? I feel like I've been hand foiling for six, seven years now since since I made it a thing, since I first started, maybe. But yeah, if I I have a cricket and I I. I've been meaning, like, it'd be cool to test out with, uh, with that one. Because I have a Cricut, and I understand graphics. I can make, I use the cutter for things. It'd be neat to foil things as well, potentially. But the, the temperature makes me nervous. Where are we? Both. Penmanship and... Okay, line three, done. Mike likes non-simple things. Yeah. Not that I like them. I mean, I guess I do. It's just, just appealing to me. I don't think I realize how difficult things are until I actually start to do them. And then once I start to do them, I want to finish them. So I end up just doing ridiculously challenging stupid things on <laughs> Oops. It's the mic way. Why do what's easy and simple when you can do what's hard and impossible? Difficult things are exciting. I agree. Appealing. Oh ho 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 ho! I see what you did there, Fuzzy. That was good. I think that should be a t-shirt. That's got to go on the t-shirt list. This foil is appealing. Thanks for that, Fuzzy. Appreciate it. Nope. Banana pants. I like banana pants. <laughs> yep. But I definitely, I feel like I've made a life 
out of making ridiculously hard things doable. I read a cool quote today. I mean, it's not a new quote, but it said, what was it? Nothing is impossible until you decide it is or something to that effect. It's probably much more eloquently worded than that. Oh no. I ran out of tea. Anybody want to come to my house and make me tea? I'm so it's working. Weirdest part about being at this angle to keep my face out of frame. The letters look weird. I'm writing at a very strange angle. Good job of the E because I didn't read it. I lost the line a little bit on one part of it. Sorry, I'm in frame now. Messed up the E a little bit. <laughs> this is the first time I've uh, finished it on the live. That's true. I usually finish it after we're done. I always forget about it. Darn it, I'm mad that I messed up that E. For shame. Sorry, teacher blozer. My apologies. Oh, I did have my wine session, that's true. I may have finished it. Normally I don't mention it when I finish it. Because it's sad. I'm always sad when I finish my tea. Because I want more. But I very often don't.
I might have to do this again after this and do a perfect version. Take a little more time, not do it live. Done that too fast. Cross our fingers that the quick stuff is still working. Okay, first paragraph done. Getting there. Slowly but surely, we're getting through the letter. Capital letter, snazzy I. Oh, wavy line. Darn it. Shaky wavy line. Close to halfway, not quite halfway yet. Is eminently okay. I have to be careful now. We're getting into spelling error territory. I've written the first half of this letter a lot more than the second half. Fitting.
<laughs> Sorry, this isn't the most entertaining live today. <laughs> We've lost a lot of viewers. It's not the most uh, exciting thing to watch, I suppose. Yeah, same playlist as last week. Greatest offhand penman of our time. Do those F's and H's quite as nice as he did, unfortunately. I'm gonna fix the angle on this D. <laughs> I got your back, Blozer. It's interesting to me that he didn't use an ending R on that one of our time. He used the standard R.
groovy tune. I think my underline on this one was bad. Okay. Huh. I might have to take a small arm break. Oh. Arm is tight. <laughs> this is a workout. Oh. As if you imagine, unlike penmanship, where I have no tension at all and in here any there's no pressure the uh it's slow so it's but even with slow writing you're you're just you're going slowly so there's a little bit of tension and control it creates a little bit of muscle fatigue but with penmanch or with foiling there's the slow but then also there's always a constant pressure and that pressure so i'm <laughs> pressing into the table solid for the past however long i've been doing this Ow. I don't like when things hurt. <laughs> Would I be able to do movement writing after foiling? Uh, probably. I think so. Um, just because, I mean, my muscles are sore. But they're different muscles, like it's, right now, it's my sort of bicep, tricep, and hand muscles, and forearm muscles that are sore, because they're what's pressing down. Whereas movement is all back. A little, like, bicep as well, but it more comes from my back and my shoulder, so I feel like I still could. It might not be as good as if my muscles were fresh, uh, but I think I still could. Be able to do ah. It would if the iron is hot enough, it definitely would. Um you just have to have an iron that can go most irons I don't think will go hot enough. because uh, any heat, technically, um I think the issue with laminators is just a combination. I think the speed they go and the pressure they use um, is just different than what the foil requires. Um, you could, if you could modify the settings, if I had a, somebody should make a laminator that has temperature control and speed control. I think they have speed control, but if I could change the temperature and speed, I know what is it? I think tattoo shops, what they use to make their prints, that's almost like a, a laminator. And that machine has a lot of controls on it. I bet you with one of those, I could get this foil to work with, um, with the laminating. Uh, I think one issue that comes into play there is it's laminating onto like the toner. Um, so it's, that's why it potentially wouldn't work because you can't, Maybe this foil doesn't work as well with that toner and heat. But if you put a sheet of piece, a sheet of paper in a laminator and the laminator was hot enough, it would just laminate the entire sheet. So an iron, same thing. Like I could take this piece of foil, put it on this piece of paper, and my clothing iron, I'm pretty sure I could get hot enough that I could just go and this would all foil. So long as I'm getting even pressure. I wouldn't have to have a a cushiony surface underneath, like a towel or a regular, um, like a, what's it called, an ironing mat underneath, if I was going to do that, 
but I'm certain they would work so long as the iron gets hot enough. Because this, I mean, this foil, specifically the foil I use, is designed for a heat press. So that's, it's designed for heating up a metal die and then pressing it down with a press. Because um, it's that combination of the time it's pressing and the the press itself is what gives you the, the adherence. Um, and that's what, I mean, all foils are essentially printing foil. That's what they are. They're just different there's thousands of different formulas and the formulas whatever's on the back um that make them different and different thicknesses of the because they're all on like a clear plastic or like an acetate um and there's different thicknesses of those like i uh, i believe i may be incorrect but i'm pretty sure like deco foil for example is much thicker um the foil is like the foil itself isn't thicker but the plastic that's on it is is quite a bit thicker um I've been able to get most foils to work, but again, it's a different combination of temperature, pressure, and speed. Different foils require different things. The specific reason I use this foil is that it is sp specifically formulated to work on the most, um, the most things. So I can foil leathers and woods and plastics and all sorts of things, where there are other foils that are specifically formulated to stick on thin paper or thin like glossier paper and that's what would be used for like water bottles and labels and things like that um this foil would also work but there's other foils that potentially are different um are you sure jenny i i feel like it might just i mean the formulas are different um but I don't, I think most of it is just the variables that, that make them work. I'm pretty certain, I'm, I'm, I, I can't say positive, but I'm pretty sure. Um, Cause I know I can foil with uh, laminating foils or f laminating foil, I'm pretty sure I can do the same work. It's just different. Uh, I just have to use slightly different techniques. And I know, like, I have some of my other foils. Unfortunately, not all of my foil is available in the same formula. Uh, example, rose gold and um, my dark silver. My s smoke silver don't come in this same formula. They come in a very similar formula, but it's white instead of this brown color. And it's it works almost as, almost the same, but it's slightly different. Its release point is different. Uh, you'll notice in foiling videos, anytime I'm foiling something rose gold or um, dark silver, after I'm done and I do the peel, there's often silver bits that are, it gets pulled off of the clear acetate, um, but it doesn't, it's not it's stuck, it's not glued to the leather. That's why I do the wipe in all my videos. Because oftentimes with certain foils, there's extra of the metallic that gets pulled off during the peel, but it was never heat activated to stick to the material. That's the thing. I mean, it, it may not work with laminators and that's, I mean, laminators are one temperature right, and one speed, they're designed, I mean, that's why a laminator company has sort of their foil, because the machine is calibrated to work specifically with their foil on their, on the substrate that it's designed for. Um, those machines don't allow for the sort of customizability, I guess. But it may not work. I, honest, I'm not honestly certain. I don't own a laminating machine, um, so I'm not sure. It would be cool. There are, like I said, there are thousands of different formulas of foil out there. I think Mike is able to work with him because he's not a laminate. Hmm? I'm only part machine. Oh, 
Okay. Maybe break time. Drink some water since I'm out of pee. All right, back to it. Language and inimitable penmanship. Next words, inimitable. I wish I was a machine. When I used to paint shoes, when that, when, when I did that for a living, I actually started filming painting shoes. The only reason I started making videos was because people actively stopped believing uh, I was getting called out as a liar on the internet. People were telling me I was cheating. They're like, there's no way you did that with your hand, blah, blah, blah. And lots of people I was getting like called out as a liar. I was like, uh, no, let me get a camera. Bought a camera and turned it on to record myself film or record myself painting the shoes to prove it because people thought I was Lying to the world. Isn't lying? I'm not a liar. I have many things, but a liar's not one of them. I once painted a sign, a wall, a wall sign in a store in Los Angeles. And when I was finished, the owner of the store wouldn't let me erase the pencil markings underneath. Um, and the, I was going to come in the next day and fix like this, fix some of the line work, but he wouldn't let me erase it and he wouldn't let me perfect the line work because uh, the, the paint I was using was shiny. It was enamel paint, uh, one shot, and it was shiny, and it legitimately looked just like shiny vinyl, just got a vinyl print, just got slapped on the wall. And he didn't want people thinking that he just put up a vinyl sign. He wanted people to know that it was hand, uh, hand painted. So he never let me erase the pencil. So there's pencil marks behind it. That store has since, sh since shut down, but it was neat. Forever proof in there by hand. Inimitable. Winds southerly at about 15 gusts to 25 miles an hour. Barometric pressure 30.00 and is rising. And no precipitation, we're about a half inch behind. Fresh and a half inch ahead for the year.
How funny would it be if I finished this and nothing happened? There's no foil stuck to the paper. It's happened before. I've posted videos of peels where there's just no foil. There's little dots of it. But it happens. Certain materials. Oiling in retail stores, sometimes I would learn the hard way when a material was not foilable, unfortunately. Okay, have a line done. Cooking with gas now, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like I started to press a little harder. I can see a little bit better what I'm foiling now. Not a lot, but a little. Oh, his descender started to get smaller. The most famous authors. Are anyone else's eyes tired? <laughs> Sorry, I'm glad you guys are carrying conversations in the chat. I'm not looking up here nearly as much as I should be. Yeah, he started doing his ascender super tiny all of a sudden. Never realized that before. Weird. Whoops. That's a mic ass, not a blozer ass.
was quite an undertaking. <laughs> Whoa. Three lines and a signature left. Hello. Well, don't force yourself, force yourself to be awake. Sleep is important. I'm so glad you decided to not do the Charlie Chaplin piece. <laughs> I would have been like, not even a quarter way finished it by now. And I would have been stressed out. Because at least this one is penmanship. No straight lines that I have to follow perfectly. Where the writing is getting small as I go down. Don't hallucinate, Marilyn. <laughs> happy birthday uh, tomorrow. Or a happy early birthday to you. We don't need you hallucinating on your birthday.
once I was in a Spencerian class at Iampeth, and I had told Harvest, it was Harvest's class, I had told Harvest before the class that I was going to work on sort of some advanced, more signature design than really following along in the class. I wanted to tell her just so she wouldn't look at me and be angry if I looked like I wasn't paying attention at all. Um, but when I design signatures, this is how I sit. Sometimes I like relax or not good posture, still flat back, which is important, um, but I'm much closer to the paper. And she full on called me out over on the microphone and everybody in the entire room looked at me. And I was straight up like this, just like chilling, chin on my hand, just like doodling. And uh, I got called out. I chill with my chin on my hand quite a bit when I'm doing close up work like this. Usually when I'm designing, I'm not when I'm actually spoiling. <laughs> Make it to the bed. Yes, please. and now he uses the ending art. I find it fascinating how he goes between those, between the different variations of letters without really any sort of rhyme or reason. Gotta be careful. I think I'm getting careless again. It's written on a pad or an online page. Probably an online page. There's always been a lot of debate um, on if the penmen sort of penciled lines or used a piece of paper under their paper as a guideline. Um, Many people believe they wrote with no guide whatsoever and just wrote perfectly straight. Um, I honestly don't know. I think they have the ability to write incredibly straight. I, uh, like I know Brian, for example, I cursive, he hates guidelines. He much prefer to write um, on either a dotted pad or 
just no guideline whatsoever. I personally like having printed guidelines underneath my sheet. I don't usually like having them on the actual sheet itself. But I don't know how this was written. It's very, very perfect. A couple of the lines are a little here or there, but that could also be the scans and, the, and whatnot. Ah, <laughs> Brian's in here. Nice. It's hard to tell. I mean, honestly, though, even as much as all, like, the, the people who've gotten in with the magnifying glasses and stuff, nobody knows. Like, even, I don't know if it's possible for Michael to actually know. I think people could have very educated guesses, but there's a lot of this stuff that people are making as, their assumptions. People are making, even in, like, Del Tisdale's breakdowns. I mean, unless you hear it from like Brownfield about how Madaraz wrote, a lot of the breakdowns by analysis, you don't know. That is speculation. So there's no way, yeah, there's no way to actually tell that stuff. Because even when you write on a line, it doesn't necessarily follow the line perfectly. I've digitized this piece and I've followed the lines and the lines are basically perfect so if there's no if they weren't following a line then even more kudos to Blozer for being able to do this piece without um, without guidelines because they are basically perfect and even if something is off it's not off in like angle or wobbly off it'd be like one line might be like a couple millimeters higher than it normally would be if it was evenly spaced. So it, that could just be with like a ruler or a phantom line. I think they use phantom liners, but... Yeah, it's hard to... It's hard to say. It's fun to imagine they were good enough to do work of this caliber without lines. But I find that part a little hard to believe. Because they are perfect but then again those guys were trained to do that that was what all their training was in the business college they were trained to write like computers basically so it's very possible but i think definitively it's impossible for anybody to definitive definitively say any of those things unless we somehow acquired video of it, which would be amazing. There is proof of one video course um, that exists that was promoted in the, I believe it was the Business Educator, but if it wasn't the Business Educator, it was one of the magazines, um, but I know nobody who has heard of it in real life or knows it. It's probably sitting in some college or school basement or they rotted away, possibly. But if it exists, it would be dope if we could find it because then we'd have actual video proof. My sort of big argument when it when it co talks to or when it comes to um, like guidelines for them to use, it's just like the creation of the oblique holder. If they could use guidelines under their sheet, I don't understand why they wouldn't. Like if like you don't have to pencil in guidelines, it takes no extra work, but just having some kind of phantom line underneath to follow. It's just, it's one of those, like, work smarter, not harder type of situations. I don't know why you would want to risk your stuff perfect when you could very easily put a guide underneath it. You don't have to follow the guide. Um, it could even just be, like, grid paper underneath that they follow sort of wherever they want, but it just gives them a general line. I know they didn't use guides for angle, never. Um, 
I don't assume anyways they ever use angle guides or stuff like that. But lined paper, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they put lined paper underneath their paper. The old paper is pretty see-through, a lot of it. It wouldn't surprise me. But it also wouldn't surprise me if they were just amazing and could do it without. If that video exists, Brian, we'll find it one day. I considered calling some schools looking for it, but... Half the schools that existed back then don't even exist anymore, so... That search proved fruitless. Sorry that my head has been in the screen for this entire video. <laughs> Now I officially know that I never want to write somebody a letter. Spoiling. <laughs> I burned a letter to somebody once. I had those that wood, it's wood paper, really thin sheets of wooden paper. And I burnt a letter to someone. But unfortunately, the paper had different, uh, like the, not knots, but the different lines in the paper where the lines were, some of the, um, some of the bits wouldn't burn well. So some of them burn like beautifully, beautiful color and then the line would just disappear when it hit another part. I tried, it didn't really work that well though. So then I stuck to writing people invisible letters in invisible ink until Chin got mad at me when I did that. <laughs> so I haven't written an invisible letter in a while. Just Chin got angry. <laughs> I would maybe make an exception, but also I would not write this small. If I wrote a foiled letter, it would not... It would also go a lot quicker if I was just doing it freehand and just writing. I wouldn't have to follow, I could just write. I would write bigger than this, and I wouldn't have to be so uh, careful. This is like torture.
guess tomorrow I have to do a sink slinging signature. I haven't tried that one yet. I've doodled it a couple times slowly, just like in pencil to make sure I know where where all the lines go. I haven't actually tried to write it yet. Oh, I made that shape really big. I feel like I saw at a glance. Holy oh, asked a question. And it's filling in this shape, and then I will look at the chat. So the question, if it was an actual question. Thanks for everybody, well, for hanging out everybody. Watching me boil for hours. Oh yeah, four minutes to midnight. We're not going Black Light Live tonight, just so you guys know. We're gonna finish this and then we're gonna be done. <laughs> the lights will go off, but I'm gonna turn them back on. Oh, you did the signature. Nice. Good job. What do you... <laughs> no. Dismiss. Okay, Google, turn off glow light. Okay, Google, turn on studio. Thank you. <laughs> and we're back. Brian's B. Psh. It's Blozer's B. But yes, it's Brian's favorite B. <laughs> it is super... Well, it's not super simple, Fozzy. But you know what I mean.
I have trouble drawing this shade properly, let alone writing it. or the variation of this bee that has the, the double loop on the top and the bottom. I think it looks dope. I don't know where it exists, but I know it does exist. I can't remember specifically where. Shade is not fully filled in, but it's okay for now. Okay. Oh, summer. <laughs> yes, James. I know exactly what you're talking about. And I've never, I've never seen that specific specimen that you're talking about in my searches, unfortunately. No, not peel time quite yet. Almost. Um, I'm going to go through. I want to add little accent shade. I didn't do accent shades on like the A's and the things like that. I'm going to do those really, just really, really quickly. Um, on some of the downstrokes. I need to get really close to them. That's why I didn't do them before. I need to get my head right in front there, so I apologize. But I want to refine all the little T and D shades. And then I'm going to quickly double check that the um, Capital shades are good. And then I'm gonna do the peel. Few more minutes, it won't be long. Didn't add a lot of extra shades on this piece. Some, but not many. The, beach. the A's have a little bit of extra sauce. That's about it. Um. Sorry, I'm right in, in the camera this time, you guys. I'm not even gonna worry about having this part of the end. I'm just gonna try to get through this as quick as possible so you don't have to wait forever. Checking where all the extra little accents are to see if I can hit some of them. Occasional R he did. Shaded. I feel like this letter is one of the best examples of... People always ask me, like, what strokes do you use at what time, or do you always know what's coming next, and things like that. Um, but when it comes to, like, basic a letter, when you use ending letters, when you use... Uh, like when you cross a T or when you go over the T, um, when you like add an exit stroke, when you don't add an exit stroke, when you add an entry stroke and not an entry stroke. This is I gotta be one of the best examples of just like those on the fly choices. Some of them don't make sense, but it's just interesting. After studying this letter, it really changed up the way when I'm just writing, 
I'm just writing a random chunk of words when I use certain variations of letters. Whereas before I kind of always had like my go-tos, like I would always do certain things, but now it's much more, I guess, adaptable depending on sort of what's around. And I feel like that comes from studying uh, this piece. Give me a little shade on that D. Sorry, going as quick as I can through this. One thing you have to be very careful of when you're doing touch-ups like this, if you heat up an area of the foil too much, the residual heat can sort of go off into around the letter, and then it can adhere foil not on just your hairline. So it makes your lines not as clean as you want them to be if you're not careful. Some of the notes I'm saying out loud aren't necessarily just for you guys uh, watching right now, but also for people who play back. This is kind of like a not tutorial foiling tutorial, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Choreographed to this song before, I'm pretty sure. No, wait, choreographed? I definitely edited a video to this song. One of my foiling videos, I believe. Any fun ideas for Late Night Live next week? What do you guys want to do? Hey, my mate's back. <laughs> Thanks, Asha. I'll be right over.
I need to create an ornamental penmanship community in Vancouver so that I can have local calligraphy penmanship people to talk to. Not to talk to, but to hang out. To have in-person sessions with. Sorry, the screen is literally just my head for all of this part. Leave it in the comments below how many times Mike says sorry during this block. sporadically. Oh, I forgot to cross that T. I'm glad I came back through here. Such a beautiful E and I messed it up. If the foiling works, it's gonna be the worst part of this entire thing. Who knew that foiling a letter would be so time consuming? Maybe everybody but me. <laughs> I love how often the chat ends up just being about food. Not mad at it one bit. Okay, next line. Almost there. Always shaded the A in penmanship every time he'd written penmanship in his letter. Western Kansas will begin the 
73 up in the Goodland area, 72 in Garden City, 70 reported by Dodge City and Liberal, 72 2 2 over at, by the Good Folks of Guam. Almost there, folks. After I'm done these, I gotta go back down and refine the signature on the bottom. Or just make sure the shades are fully filled in. And then we'll be good for the peel. Winds southerly at about 15 with gusts of 25 miles an hour. Barometric pressure 30.00 and is rising. And no precipitation, we're about a half inch behind. Fresh and a half inch ahead for the year. One in 5300s behind for the for the year so far. We'll be looking for a little bit of a change tomorrow, and of course the possibility of some scattered showers. Today, of course, there's nothing showing up on the radar. And we cross our fingers. That the foil actually stuck. After the U.S. rain showers and thunder showers along that frontal system, and that wide band of fairly heavy snow. But you know what will happen each time that you see the frontal system on there? That begins at six o'clock in the morning, and then you'll see the cloud pattern move until two o'clock this afternoon. So as of that time, of course, the front was way off to the northwest. Now, however, it's moving into the central part of the nation with a couple of high-pressure set cells behind it. Just in the interest of education, the smartest thing for this point, doing the, the large shaves, the best thing I could do, I'm not going to do it though, because I don't want to take time to change tips and stuff. But the best thing I could do would be to replace the tip with a slightly broader tip. To fit the shade. I would get a smoother shade if I did that. Or a smoother transfer, rather. Of the foil. But we're just doing run and gun today. Also didn't cross this F. Whoa. It currently reads Friends of Penmanship, which is no good. That's done for the date. Getting there slowly but surely. Thank you. 
Okay. Notice the signature on the bottom. And we're done. I didn't even shade. <laughs> the Beyond Blozer isn't even shaded. Wear a face mask. Why do I have to wear a face mask? Foil that wouldn't peel off, meaning it was like just totally stuck to it? Uh, not that I know of. No, I don't think so. sticking, not the foil sticking too much. I'm trying to think if I've ever had the foil damage the surface from sticking though. Yes, actually, there was one time, I can't remember what leather I was working on, but it had a really like delicate coating and when I foiled what would happen when I peeled it instead of like the it still peeled fine but the part that I would that I peeled off where the foil was stuck the foil didn't come off of a clear piece of plastic and the the top coating of the leather got tore off the the leather basically um some leather is extremely fragile, which is surprising because it's leather, it's not supposed to be. But some of it is very, very fragile. I feel like that happened when I was foiling in Germany once. On something that was maybe lamb skin leather? Super, super soft and delicate leather. Okay. Final shade on the bottom of Blozer. Call this finish. I feel like I missed something in the chat. Why do I have to wear a face mask when I peel? Gosh. 
I didn't actually have a Halloween costume this year, but it doesn't look like we're supposed to be having Halloween parties, so I may not be doing anything at all for Halloween. Which is kind of lame. See what happens, I guess. I was wanting to make a Newt Scamander costume. Either Newt Scamander from the Fantastic Beast series or Milo from the uh, um, Atlantis Disney cartoon. Well, ladies and gents, I think we're going to call that. <laughs> Not all lamb. I mean, I've spoiled lots of things that were that were lamb before. It was just one. I don't remember if it was like a wallet and it was the inside of the wallet that got messed up or what it was. Here, I should zoom out for you guys. Get everything in frame. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Which corner should I peel from? This one? Towards me? Hmm. This way? <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter. The tape is gonna be the only thing peeling. The foil is not stuck to the paper at all. So the tape is the only thing that's really peeling. <laughs> I might have, Brian. We'll never know. It will well it's not gonna be perfect, because I definitely made mistakes in the in the foiling as well. But it'll be it'll be decent. The worst thing that could that could happen either no the foil didn't stick, or when I peel it, my tape. Normally I put the tape on my shirt or my pants a couple times, so it's a little bit more low tack. And I feel like well, I definitely didn't do that today. So hopefully my tape doesn't rip my paper. I didn't really think about that till right now. Here I'm gonna go from this top corner. Down. Okay. Here we go. Everybody cross your fingers. Oh, you stay down. Oh, so far so good. That actually looks really dope. Slow. <laughs> getting all not a very smooth peel story guys <laughs> here we go we gotta go like side after side oh the foil transferred really well Shoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. there's a few missed spots in the shade but <laughs> I'm destroying this little piece of foil. That didn't foil off or didn't come off smooth at all. There we go. Get that over there. Dude. A couple spots that have foil backing. Wow. Yo, that actually looks sick and it's super shiny. Ink doesn't look like this. Ink looks good, but ink doesn't look like this. Here, I'll zoom in so that I can get a bit more of a close-up. Let's 
some of it. Some of the stuff didn't didn't all transfer perfectly. Let me get the shine, the lighting. My lights are bright in all directions, so I'm not getting any good like passing light in the small camera. Oh, you can really see the shininess in the small camera. That's dope. And I'm gonna trim it so it'll be eight by 10. But there's no like, I'm stoked that there's no spots that really didn't foil. Like there's no dots at all in these spots that I thought I was going too quick. Foiled actually really well. I can see an eye that I didn't dot. That's easy to fix. Ta-da! <laughs> Oh, I am worn out. What time is it? 12.30. What time did I actually start foiling this thing? Probably around like 9.30? That's a long time. Inimitable. And pretty sure Ashok. I don't know if he's still in here or not. I don't think I made a single spelling mistake. Oh, Inimitable isn't. Oh, none of them are dotted. Let's dot those eyes. I'll show you guys my trick for dotting. It's not a trick, it's my technique for dotting eyes. And for fixing mistakes and things. There are other ways to do it, but this is how I do it. I don't believe I've ever filmed this part before. I've shown people in person at convention things, but I get a thin piece of the foil. So it's easy to place. Inimitable. And then you just hover over where you need the dot to be. Inimitable. Let's also get this one in skill. There's probably some other ones. But that's okay. I don't want to get this little black spot in Zayner and didn't foil that well. There we go. Wait, the shades could be a little a little cleaner. I may go over the shades with some more foil. Um Maybe I'll auction this off. Maybe I'll do that. Fun, or maybe I'll do a giveaway. Oh, friends in Friends of Penmanship at the very top isn't dotted either. Whoops. Cool. I gotta be honest, that turned out better than expected. I expected there to be at least some some poor foiling spots, but that turned out pretty darn sweet. <laughs> I'll decide what to do with it. I don't know if I'll keep it. I might keep it. I always say that I'm gonna donate or auction off or something things, and then things just accumulate in my house. I never get around to it. Because it's kind of a special-ish piece because I've never I've never foiled something like this before. I've never foiled a chunk of writing. The only time I did something similar to this was Oh, I once did a chunk of writing for what was it? The Green Lantern. His sort of slogan. It's like a long paragraph. I did that once. Just as a test, I think. I think that's in one of my boxes. Leather scraps. There we go. If I was judging the letter forms, the letter forms aren't perfect. Oh, Fozzie caught something. Period on the second paragraph. 
What second par second paragraph? Oh, you know, there's no, there's actually no period on skill in the original. Um, some of the docs, when I first scanned this piece, I thought, like some of the eyes and whatnot, I thought I accidentally, like, erased them when I was clearing up white dots and stuff in, um, in Photoshop, but... The original scan, we go back through here, and this is the, the cleanest scan that, to my knowledge, exists of this letter, because nobody knows where the original is. The cleanest scan in this book, there's no dot on skill. He didn't dot the end. There's also, there's one more that caught me. There's no dot on this. Um... That might be it. But I noticed those two when I was cleaning up the whole thing. I know it doesn't make sense. There should be a dot there. I agree. It's just interesting that there totally isn't. I thought I made a mistake when I was cleaning up the image. Because sometimes, I mean, dots and eyes, when I'm not paying attention to letters, and I'm just erasing printing dots and dust dots and stuff in scans, I thought I noticed it, and I went back um, to put it back in or to, like, erase the layer mask that I had created, and there was nothing there. So it's possible that it was there, and then it was never uh, photo-engraved. I believe this one would have been photo-engraved. I think that's it, though, just those two. But I'll add a dot to it, because there should be a dot. Yeah, it might have just been super, super fine. But yeah, interesting thing. I had the same thought, though. When I first did it, I was shocked. So I added a dot to this already, and I'll put a dot on skill. Because it should have one. Here we go. Finish it off nicely. It's back in the bookshelf. There's a few hours well wasted, right? <laughs> kind of fun. I think I'm going to start doing more um, paper foiling things, paper foiling pieces and, uh, and things like that. Just because not everybody's into leather. I prefer leather foiling. I do think the foil looks better when it's on leather. Um, I also want to research some... Some... I don't know the proper word. I want some squishy paper. Uh, like paper that, you know, like when you write on it, it's super indents. Like it embosses without almost any work at all. Um, I want to try to do some foiling on some squishy paper. Uh, black paper or any paper, I guess. One really cool thing about working on black paper or working in foil, there's no opacity issue. With ink, you have to ink super thick so that it's... Um, not see-through, but with foil, you don't have to worry about it. You lose a little bit of the airiness that you get when you do, uh, when you use ink, unfortunately. But, yeah. Right on. I guess I could trim it now. Eight inches? Let me set the margins while I'm here. 8 by 10. Okay. Oh, this way. There we go. Let's find the middle. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Ish. Which means 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, there we go. One and three quarter inches off that side. Yeah, handmade paper. I gotta get some of that paper that's no good at all for penmanship. Perfect for hand embossing. <laughs> okay, now top to bottom. How I feel about being uh, a member of the information society? That's a difficult question because I didn't know we were in the information society. Ooh, that's gonna be tight. Cool. I feel like I may as well get this done. Well, I'm here. I'm gonna cut my paper right now too. Get my pen. All right, let's cut it. We'll go to the tool. Oh, yeah. Out of the way. Ooh. Pens. And then if you use. Watching me work. Maybe not exciting. Yeah, you can get holographic foils. I have some holographic clear foils. Unfortunately, they don't they don't work the greatest for um uh, they don't work the greatest for sure that's square. Is this side square? I just remembered that one of these sides I just totally freeform or freehand cut with scissors earlier. I should not measure off of that. go. It was a bad cut. Well, we'll just have to deal with it. <laughs> I didn't quite get it exactly in the middle. Oops. Oh, 
Oh, I love my guillotine. My paper cutter, it's amazing. Here we go. Finished piece. Not exactly center, but oh well. Here we go. What brand is the paper cutting board? That's a good question. Um, it is model 50B. Brand. Doesn't have a brand though. But it is model 15E. Wow, really doesn't have a brand on it? That's awesome. I love when things, when things are unbranded. Um, I got it on Amazon. Quite, it's a, I mean, it wasn't super expensive, and it has never let me down. I use it to cut foil, I use it to cut paper all the time. I like that the, the rubber piece that comes down holds the whatever I'm cutting in place really well. Um, yeah, it's always done a good job for me. I would highly recommend it. I don't know what brand it is. I should, I should do that Amazon affiliate link thing. I guess. It's a really good, it's a good paper cutter. I prefer, I wish this one doesn't work, it's not sharp enough. I like this paper cutter better though. Just cause it looks good. Like this is, this is my beauty for picture paper cutter. Uh, where the, I keep, I keep researching how to sharpen it, but the, um, the blade is not removable. It's physically attached. It's part of the, the handle and everything is one solid piece of cast iron that was then sharpened, I guess? And then unfortunately the spring is broken, but that's not a required thing to get it to work. But that's a for show item. <laughs> Yeah, I'll try to find the link, uh, and I'll share it. I bought it years ago, so... But I'll try to, uh... I'll try to find it. Yeah, like, that's how you sharpen scissors and nail clippers and stuff like that. That one, like, that's a dull piece of, um, cast iron. I think it needs to actually be, like, sharpened, sharpened, if it's even possible to get it sharp enough. Um... I know there are people that you can take them to, all the videos I've seen are have removable blades that you can sharpen. I mean, I I don't actually need it to work because I have my other paper cutter. It's, it's kind of fine that it's just for show and it doesn't cut my hand off when I'm taking pictures <laughs> with it. And I try IKEA for sharp. No, I have I've never never done anything to sharpen. I've just looked at it and be like, well, that's dull and needs sharpening. And that's about as far as my research and whatnot has taken me. I've Googled videos on it, but I've never found one that I haven't seen a video that has just a single unit handle. But um, maybe one day. Not necessity, because I got that one, and that one does a really good job. I guess that's it. Wow, it's almost one in the morning. I guess that's it. That was a fun lie. That was quite good. I'm happy with this. I want to do another one now. I want to make it better. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to wrap that up here. I'm sorry that we hit midnight. We've been an hour past midnight and we didn't go Blacklight Live. Apologize for that. Um, but it happens. Uh, if you like the video, give me a like. Hit the bell, do all that YouTube stuff. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Um, make sure you're falling in love with the process. This is all part of my whole process. 
Today was a learning experience. This is why I do what I do, not to create uh, the finished products, but to learn how to create cool stuff like this. Uh, that's what it's all about. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that life should be just a bit of silliness, really. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Good night, or good morning, or good afternoon, or good whatever time it is where you are.